I'm here today at the uh, village, almost hamlet, of Witherton up on the North Norfolk coast. We're about a mile or two from Cly, uh, Cly next to the sea, and we're about uh, two miles from the sea itself. And indeed, the field behind me, just over there, used to be a deep water harbour. Anyway, we've got the pub behind me, got the village church in front of me. What else does a village green need? We've of course got the um, the village cannon. Stuck in the middle of the village green and looking a bit like a rather forlorn gatepost. Why is it here? Well, I've not been able to find out much about it, but perhaps a careful examination might show us some more. So here I am standing at the Witherton Cannon. Uh, I've got one of my ones from home. Fairly simple technology, the cannon. Sealed tube, sealed at this end, open at this end, you ram your powder and shot down the muzzle. And if you're lucky, if you're very lucky, your shot is a nice, neat sphere. This one's three pounder, possibly Napoleonic. Rolls down the barrel, not a problem. Very simple technology, it shouldn't be capable of going wrong. What's happened to this one? Someone has had a very bad day. That is the barrel, it's blown out. This gun has gone from being an artillery piece to a pipe bomb in very short order. Now what's happened and where is it? If we look below, we've got the trunnions here and here. They seem to be mouldy on this side, which means the top of the barrel is that side, the bottom of the barrel is here. So it looks like it's the lower third of the barrel that's blown out. Now, bit dramatic, what could possibly have caused this to happen? Well, as they're very fond of saying on Mythbusters, well, there's your problem. There's a shot jammed in the muzzle. Several possibilities. Possibility one is the shot may have been misshaped. It was capable of going down because it was ovoid, but as it came up, it rolled and jammed in the muzzle. That's a good possibility. Second possibility is it's the wrong caliber. Uh, a lot of cannon ended up in uh, private hands in the 18th and 19th century. East Indiamen, merchant ships, etc., all carried artillery. And it's possible that someone's got hold of something like a, uh, a nine pounder shot and shoved it down an eight pounder barrel. Either way, bit disastrous. So when the gun has been touched off, instead of the shot flying out, it's jammed in the muzzle, and you've suddenly gone from artillery piece to instant pipe bomb. I've made inquiries locally, and so far I've not been able to find anybody who could tell me the full story on this piece. So as it were, the piece has to speak for itself. The damage here is quite severe. If we go in with the close up, you can actually see it's also heavily worn, which suggests it has not happened recently. There's a lot of rust, a lot of corrosion there. But this is the Wiverton Cannon. Definitely a bad day for someone when it jammed and uh, blew the barrel out. Right, the Wiverton Cannon is just over there. We were just filming. And you might be forgiven for thinking we've exhausted the artillery potential of this tiny little village in Norfolk. Not so. We pan around here, past the rather gorgeous medieval church here, to the church entrance, and what do we have? We've got one of those. Now for those not in the know, that is a blacker bombard stud. Most Brits don't know what they are, and I'm pretty certain the most uh, American, Australian or Canadian visitors probably wouldn't recognise it either. Back in the 1940, we were under invasion threat and the uh, British Army didn't have enough weapons. They certainly didn't have enough weapons to arm the Home Guard, now known as Dad's Army because of the TV series. So one of the first things that uh, a very enterprising chap called Blacker came up with was the Blacker Bombard. And it's uh, an example of one there I photographed at Tilbury Fort some years ago. It's a spigot mortar bomb thrower. The idea is that a very large projectile weighing 14 to 20 pounds, there's one there, 
you can just see it sticking out of that one large projectile was loaded onto a spigot flimped out the front and it could fire about 900 meet, uh, 900 yards in a good day uh, this particular one here was almost certainly located in a weapon pit and there is an example of a weapon pit that has been dug into the ground there you can see there now down below ground level that round thing that they've got the weapon balanced on is one of these um, very often they're made of stainless steel which is why they are not rusted and these still pop up all over uh, Britain uh, I've seen them in castles I've seen them in fortresses where they were added on as a home guard extra in World War II and in addition to uh, these fixed positions there's also a field mounting which is that one now officially this weapon was never used in action officially Unofficially, the Indian Division, when they were based in Britain in 1940-41, were issued with these as anti-tank weapons. What no one found out about at the time is the Indian Division took them to North Africa and the weapon became used during the first siege of Tobruk, lobbing high explosive charges at high angles of uh, attack over into the German trenches. The Germans didn't like them. But apart from its use at the uh, first siege of Tobruk, it's not known that the, it's thought that the Blacker Bombard never saw any further service. And certainly by the time about 1944, with the Allied push into Europe, they became uh, redundant. Today there's very few surviving examples of the weapon. In fact, I believe that one's actually a uh, reproduction at the Tilbury Fort in uh, Essex. But these mountings turn up everywhere. Uh, we've got one in my village, which I'll almost certainly cut to in a moment. And uh, they're dotted around the coast, and I've even tied a boat up against one on the Norfolk Broads. Very characteristic, you've got this shiny stud arrangement here. They're normally um, uh, stainless steel, but just occasionally you do find a rusted one, which means that uh, a mild steel substitute was used. Anyway, this is the Blacker Bombard stud and it is the second um, point of artillery interest in the tiny little village of Wiverton in Norfolk. So this is just a wrap-up shot. I'm back at the Wiverton smoothbore muzzleloader with its uh, burst barrel section there and if I lift up gently and start panning the camera in that direction over to the park bench there is the Blacker Bombard stud. So you can see they're within 50 or 60 feet of each other. That would have been dug into a substantial earthwork as you saw in that last picture and that's been here since about 1940. Right, moving into the village of Cly itself we have more artillery oddities. We have one, two, three, and possibly four artillery pieces here in place as bollards. Uh, one of them looks like it could be a carronade and that one looks like it's had bits uh, wanged onto it. This one here could be a carronade. Again in place here is a bollard and in the days before we had uh, proper pavements here this would have kept the cartwheels away from the shop door. Moving on from Witherton, as we just were, and uh, coming through Cly, this is another World War II defence you don't see many of these days. Approximately 199 of these were built. They are Allen Williams turrets. There's some dispute as to how Allen is spelt. This is a rotating gun turret. Um, a brain gun or similar could be mounted inside. There's a top hatch for anti-aircraft purposes. There's a lower hatch here for um, surface fire. And access into it is via an opening at the back. This is probably the best preserved, so you can actually still see how they got in. Going through there, underneath, there's a vision slit just down there, very low. You can just about see there. 
Um, so about 199 of these were built. We think only about a dozen or so have survived. The Imperial War Museum went to a great deal of trouble to dig a rusty one out of a field. But I happen to know where there's two perfectly good ones. And this one actually is not in bad condition. There used to be another one at Wells next to sea. Um, but that's disappeared. It's either been buried or it's been cut away for scrap. Alan Williams turret. Welded steel construction. Bulletproof, but not really tank proof. Stick a 37 millimeter round into that and you've basically got a tomb for uh, two or three good men. Reason why it's here is it overlooks the marshes at Cly. If I pan round here, um, and the beach is up here where these people have just come from. There's the beach, and that Alan Williams turret would have covered the approach from the beach in that direction, and also covers the beach road over here. So it has a field of fire in that direction, and a field of fire back in this direction. So this is a, a rare World War II Alan Williams turret, there's the village, there's the famous Clyde windmill just coming into shot, and we're back to the turret here, entrance here, anti-aircraft machine gun mounting there, and this lug on top would have been how they first lowered it into position. We'll give you some interior, there's a pintle mount here from machine gun, I say probably a Bren gun, but they could have had a Hotchkiss or whatever was, a, was given to them. There's some signs of the... I'll get the stick right inside. Uh, there's some indication of how it used to swing. There's the um, one of the wheels it's, it rotated on. There was a, a race arrangement around here. There's another wheel over there. Just there. That's it. And I think there probably was a third one in that direction. So rotating Alan Williams turret, entrance through there at the back, room for two or three men, possibly with a bring gun. I'm going to have to apologise for the bird noise here, but I'm right next to uh, a nature reserve. Moving on with the World War II theme, what has become increasingly a, uh, a tour of the uh, north coast of Norfolk, we have these two large concrete blocks now laying on their side, but once they were upright. So you can imagine it's been turned, it's on its side. That's the base at the end, that's the top. You can actually see in the sunlight, you can see the shape of the timber shuttering. And each one of these probably weighs a good three or four tons. Why are they here? They were once the anti-tank obstacles across this path. To left and right of me is large ditch and pond, such as that. But the only path for an invading German army off the marshes would be through this gate here. So to serve as an anti-tank obstacle, sometime in 1940, after the fall of France, Britain became very threatened. And a chap called General Ironside, lovely name, was put in charge of home defence. And uh, he was building pillboxes, dragon's teeth, concrete anti-tank obstacles, steel anti-tank obstacles, stuff going up everywhere. And this is, the area there is where those two blocks would have been located. Um, the reason why they haven't been taken any further away is they're just too heavy. So at some stage, post-war, someone's pulled a bulldozer up, wrapped a chain around them, and literally just wrenched them out of the ground like two rotten teeth. So this is the concrete anti-tank obstacles at the village of Salt House, which is roughly halfway between Cly and Weybourne. So we're up on the North Norfolk coast. The sea is out there, and if the Germans had invaded, they might have come down this track, tried to get up onto the coast road behind me, and discover they couldn't get through because these blocks have been put in the way. Concrete anti-tank blocks and concrete anti-tank cubes sometimes colourfully referred to as dragon's teeth. 
We don't see many of those in Norfolk, but driving along the coast road between uh, Cly and Sheringham, you soon come across the Muckleborough collection, privately owned military museum with an interesting selection of, build, of buildings and vehicles. However, the Gate Guardian at the moment is an ex Czechoslovak ZSU 23 4, 23mm calibre, four barrel weapon, radar controlled light anti aircraft gun. Started becoming a bit obsolete in the 1990s, and this one eventually got sold off by the Czechs and uh, purchased here. But I've noticed quite a few of them been turning up in the recent Ukraine war. It's one thing, they're rather good at shooting down helicopters and shooting down drones and low-flying subsonic cruise missiles. So a weapon that may yet still have some future. So it's the ZSU 23-4, Gate Guardian for the Muckleborough Collection, which is in North Norfolk. And if you're ever up here, please check it out.